With Medicare Advantage, you're not buying a second insurance. You're essentially buying into a separate network. And you agree to use the doctors, the specialists, the hospitals in your local area. And in return, your monthly premiums can be much less than Medigap. And in some cases, you can sign up for a plan that costs you $0 per month. Are you ready for a successful retirement? We're addressing the topics facing today's retirees. Welcome to Retire with Ryan. Now here's your host, Ryan Morrissey. Welcome back. This is episode 130. In this week's episode, we're going to cover Medigap and Medicare Advantage plans, what their pros and cons are, and how you can decide whether one of these plans makes sense for you. And if you'll be turning 65 soon, or you've worked past 65, and now it's time for you to enroll in Medicare, you're probably aware that you need to enroll in Medicare Part A and B. That's the first step to getting signed up for Medicare. But once you've done that, you now need to decide what will your supplemental plans be? Because as you may know, Medicare doesn't cover everything. And one of those options is Medigap. And Medigap, in its simplest form, sits underneath Medicare Part A and B to pick up the costs that traditional Medicare A and B don't cover. And without a supplemental plan, you'll have to pay additional out-of-pocket expenses above and beyond just the the cost of Medicare Part B. So for example, in 2023, you'll have to pay $1,600 every time you have a stay in the hospital. You'd have to pay $200 per day for skilled nursing rehab. And you have to pay the 20% that Medicare doesn't cover for doctor's bills, outpatient services, chemo treatments, and more. So the benefit of a Medigap plan is that with a Medigap plan, you have a fixed monthly premium instead of paying out of pocket for these additional costs. Additionally, all doctors, clinics, specialists, hospital systems across the country that accept Medicare will accept your Medigap supplemental insurance. And Medigap plans are standardized, and there are different letters that correspond to the plans. And you can select from these different plans. The letter plans you can select from are A, B, C, D, F, G, K, L, and M. A few of these are closed, such as C and G. So let's just say, or C and F, I'm sorry. Let's just say you're comparing plan G. You decided that plan G was best for you, and you live in my home state of Connecticut. If you were to go on the Medicare website and you look up the cost for plan G, you'll see that the cost will vary from one insurer to another. Even though the plans are identical, the costs are not going to be the same. So that when you're shopping for Medigap plans, you definitely need to shop those plans and look for the plan that has the lowest cost because the plans are the same. These plans don't have a prescription drug plan so that if you sign up for a Medigap plan, you'll need to sign up for a prescription drug plan Part D. Additionally, they also don't cover a dental plan and you'll have to decide if a dental plan is worth it for you. Most dental plans can be $30 to $50 a month And you'll have to decide, let's say if it's $50 a month, do you think you're going to spend or get back $600 worth of benefits by paying for a dental plan? Myself, when I was on my own insurance years ago, I had a dental plan and I canceled it after a number of years because I didn't think I was getting back what I was paying in. So additionally, when you're first eligible for Medicare during that initial enrollment period, that's either three months before your 65th birthday, your 65th birthday month, and three months after, or If you or your spouse are working past 65 and you have eligible coverage that exempts you from enrolling in Medicare, you have eight months after you or your spouse retire to enroll. So during that period, you have no restriction to go into a Medigap plan. If after that period, you decide to switch back to a Medigap plan or sign up for a Medigap plan, you can have to go through and answer medical questions, essentially go through medical underwriting, and you can be denied access to your plan. So that if you have some health conditions, it could make sense for you to go right into a Medigap plan. However, in two states, in Connecticut and New York, you can't be denied access to a Medigap plan. So you could, during the open enrollment, years after you didn't sign up for a Medigap plan, you can go into a Medigap plan without any medical underwriting. Now, that could be subject to change, but 
currently that's the way that things work. And plan G right now is the most comprehensive plan that you can sign up for. Plan F previously was the most comprehensive. Maybe you already have signed up for Medicare and you have plan F, but if you're new to Medigap, you're new to Medicare, you can't sign up for plan F. So let's talk next about Medicare Advantage. So with Medicare Advantage, you're not buying a second insurance. You're essentially buying into a separate network. And you agree to use the doctors, the specialists, the hospitals in your local area. And in return, your monthly premiums can be much less than Medigap. And in some cases, you can sign up for a plan that costs you $0 per month. Well, how would an insurance company do that? How can they make money if you're paying them $0? Well, part of your Part B premium is going to the insurance company. And they're essentially deciding how to use that Part B premium to provide care for you. So that's why companies will offer you a plan at $0. However, you now have copays every time you use a portion of your plan. And you'll share in costs up to an out-of-pocket maximum in network in 2023 of $8,300. So before you sign up for a Medicare Advantage plan, you'll want to check to make sure the doctors that you use and the specialists that you use are in your network. And if so, it can make sense. But if just a few of these specialists are not in network, and you'll be going out of network to see them, then it really could make sense to pay the extra premium and go on Medigap. And Medicare Advantage plans are different types. There's HMOs, PPOs, HMO, POSs, and even some more. I'll just cover those three. So with an HMO, it's a health maintenance organization. These are the most restrictive. The monthly premium can be zero, but you have to use the doctors and facilities in their network. And one doctor generally oversees all parts of your healthcare, and you have to get a referral or pre-authorization to see other specialists. A PPO, a preferred provider organization, offers a wider range of options and more flexibility. And you can use in-network or out-of-network providers without referrals. So definitely this is more flexible. You don't have to get a pre-authorization. However, you might pay more when using out-of-network providers. And then an HMO POS is a health maintenance organization with a point-of-service option. And this is a hybrid that has restrictions of an HMO and generally requires referrals for additional care, but you can get referrals to go out of network, but you will pay a higher cost. So that's something you'll have to look at when you're buying a Medicare Advantage plan, which one of these makes sense to you. So as a result of the Medicare Act of 1965, prescription drug coverage and dental plans were specifically and intentionally left out. And so when Medicare Advantage plans were first started, they included both prescription drugs and dental plans. That's the advantage of the plan, the Medicare Advantage. And many Medicare Advantage plans do offer dental. And a lot of these will offer you the ability to have routine cleanings, basic x-rays, and maybe $1,000 towards dental procedures. And then you'll have to pay for anything above and beyond that. Additionally, there are a lot of negative articles about Medicare Advantage plans denying claims and kicking people off plans at end of life. So it could be something to be aware of and realize that that is some of the negatives potentially of Medicare Advantage plans. So how do you decide what's best for you? Is it a Medicare Advantage plan or is it Medigap or Medicare supplemental plan? Well, that depends on a few things. One, how is your health? If you have certain pre-existing health conditions, if you have an autoimmune disease that requires outpatient treatments, if you have cancer, or if you'll be spending time out of state, this could be reasons to potentially go into a Medigap plan. Because as I mentioned earlier, Medigap plans are national networks. So if you have multiple residences or you'll be spending time out of state visiting your family or children, that could be a good reason to go with that. If you are okay with having more flexibility in your healthcare budget, if you're okay potentially having to change doctors and specialists from year to year as your network changes, And if you're okay with navigating the appeals process, if a claim is denied or a payment's denied, then you could be a better fit for a Medicare Advantage plan. Or if you're in very good health, that could be a good reason to go into a Medicare Advantage plan. But we obviously don't know what the future holds. And if you are in Connecticut or New York, currently you have the possibility to start out in a Medicare Advantage plan that are usually lower cost plans. And then if you do develop health issues later on down the road, you can make a switch. People in other states don't have that luxury because you could be denied 
access as far as switching back over to a Medigap plan from a Medicare Advantage plan. So I hope this is helpful to give you some more information about the differences between Medicare Advantage and Medigap. And if you have any listener questions, I would greatly appreciate you submitting those. And you can do that by going to retirewithryan.com. Hope that you have a good week and I look forward to talking to you next Wednesday. Take care. You should consult a financial advisor familiar with your specific circumstances before you make any financial decisions. Nothing in this broadcast constitutes a solicitation for the sale or purchase of any securities. Any mention of rates of return are historical or hypothetical in nature and are not a guarantee of future returns. Ryan Morrissey, CFP, is an investment advisor representative of Morrissey Wealth Management, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Thank you.